That's our logo. All right, so we got Nabil here. Yep. Show us what we've got for modifications on the tuck here. Pretty much everything. Yes. <laughs> uh, as we got it, it did not have a bed, so this is 100% um, hand built by us in Makerspace. And to hold it down, we uh, scavenged a couple of uh, clasps off of propane cylinder uh, holders for forklifts. Awesome. That worked great. Um, and we made it a tilt bed, not for utility so much as to be able to show off how everything works inside of here. So it's a real educational thing because I push in the clutch pedal and you can see it apply the, the throw out bearing and open up the gap on the, uh, the clutch disc, which is really cool. And also when I shift, you can see how the shift levers actuate. That's cool. Oh yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, so that's really awesome. Um, and the like throttle, the original throttle is this solid rod. Yeah. Well, our throttle input is uh, cable driven, so we needed it to pull. So when you push in on the pedal, it actually pulls that cable back there and actuates the throttle body off of a uh, some oh, Ford. I think cool. it was. Yeah. So you can see the butterfly valve open and close. And someone once told us, you know. You might want to cover that because it could get clogged. We said, ah, no, don't worry about that. <laughs> we have it on video. We went mudding with this. Nice. And uh, a chunk of a, a tree limb got stuck in there. So a little piece oh, got there. Boy. Yeah, and so then we had to, uh, now the Tuk Tuks, they've got these really obscure four bolt hubs for the wheels. Uh -huh. And the wheels that were on here weren't the right wheels for that hub. Right. That's so we're like, great. So we got to make an adapter. Well, I got these laying around. Let's go ahead and throw some Hoosiers on it. So <laughs> it now has Chevy five bolt, four on four, or five on four, three quarter, I think is what that is. I love it. That's awesome. Yeah. And upon going through, we also noticed that the uh, drain plug was missing <laughs> and it happened to be pipe thread. So, I was going to ask what that was for. Yeah, yeah, that's the drain plug. <laughs> and then underneath the seat is where the engine normally resides. Yeah, tell us what you do. And it's kind of hard to see the motor itself because we've got batteries on either side. You can see the motor controller there and the big funky relay that uh, when I turn it on, it actually, you know, literally pumps. But uh, we just made an adapter plate for the motor. You can see it better from the back here. Oh. Oh, so there's the motor, actually. Um, so we made this adapter plate right here. And when the motor spins, it just directly drives the clutch. And so the rest of the drivetrain doesn't know the difference. We had to add in this cross member in order to bring the uh, transmission back and our shaft was completely eliminated. Each of these plates originally coupled to the shaft which was about that long. And so we just went straight through bolt and that was that. Now what we're having a challenge with is that in third gear, this is a high low box. so. I flip this forward and back, it switches between high and low. Right. And then there's a three speed. So in third high, this thing tops out at about 20 miles an hour going downhill. <laughs> right. Um, but I'm able to pull a, a 73 Chevy C10. <laughs> Have done it twice with video evidence. That's awesome. Yeah. So we need to get a different rear end so we can get this thing actually spinning fast enough to be a bit safer in traffic. What are you thinking in terms of what are you thinking of sourcing that rear end from? Uh, your guess is as good all as mine. Right. So you're telling me you need a new rear end? Yeah. Okay, all right. I might actually. I have a couple of. Uh, I have a couple spares that we might be able to get you on. Okay. If you need. need yeah, because this is the off-road rear end. Okay. Yeah. So it's got uh, a, a screw drive, I believe. What Tim was describing it as, and so or a warm drive. So we need to change that, and then we can get this thing going a lot quicker. We also need to replace this throwout uh, bearing. It doesn't spin very well, okay. so when you try to shift with the clutch, it makes bad noises. Okay. So uh, we just put it in the gear and go. Right. 
So tell me about the batteries. Uh, about the it's all converted now to run completely on electric, right? Yep. So you got old uh, was it forklift batteries? Is that what no no no? These are lithium iron phosphate. So the lithium ion batteries. Yeah. Uh, specific chemistry is lithium iron phosphate, and that matters because normally lithium batteries are known as being 3.7 volts per cell. These are 3.2. So they're actually safer because you stay in a safer voltage range per cell as you charge it and as all, as you discharge it. They're also rated for three to 5,000 charge cycles. Oh. So they'll last for freaking ever. Because yeah. we probably got two dozen cycles on this. Maybe three dozen. So they'll last for 3,400 and yeah. <laughs> yeah, rust is our enemy, not the batteries. Right. Yeah, these are none, you know, we don't need to replace them. And they're relatively light. We got another pack sitting inside. Uh, we have three of these blocks that uh, we have one spare. And you can lift it and see it's not very heavy for what it is and what it does. So charging these uh, takes what? 110 volts. All right, just plug it into a regular wall socket and. Yep. Wow. So you don't even need one of those special downtown charging stations or anything like that. Nope. How about how about the, your car? Is that the same same thing, or does that need a special? My car uses the J1772 outlet. Okay. Standard. Right. Wow. Unbelievable. The yeah. change of this sucker, man. We're paying out here. Oh, yeah. We also, we chopped the top. Oh, that's all out. <laughs> nice. That's handy. Um, so originally this bolt hole was up there. Yeah. So we actually got a little bit of a rake. Yeah, I like it. The, the, the top. And it's kind of subtle, but it really gives it a, a stance. Yeah. That's a beaut. I guarantee it's the quietest, most reliable tub truck in the state. <laughs> awesome. Here, I'll show you how quiet and smooth it operates. Oh, we get to see it fired up. Yeah. On the horns, I don't know if you're ready for the horns. Well, I've got two buttons here. I've got a black button and a red button. The black one resets my charger. Guess what that red one does? You want to? Yeah. Do it. I guess do it. Do it. Touch it. Oh, yes. You want to go try the horn? You want to try the horn? You got to press the red button. Awesome. Yeah, so I got a little voltmeter right here in the glove box that shows me my current charge. I wonder where that nut went here. Um, so I can just kind of look at that and know how, how safe I am. But in reverse, first, second. You ever get the e brake working? No. <laughs> oh. I don't think I have the uh, gear engaged on the high low box. Oh, that would help. It might. Yeah, that's what it was. Alright. Oh my goodness, you can't even hear it. So this is third gear takeoff. Oh my word, it's so fast. That's, that's so fun. It's, it's so fast. fast. It's fast. It's fast. What? How do they press that? That can press that. It's so quiet. It's so quiet and fast. It has a little light on it. And so first gear,
Entire race where they all ran like this, whole different story. <laughs> 